You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a very special edition of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Vic. And that's right, Vic Moss is here. As you guys remember, Vic Moss is our photography instructor, award-winning photographer, and part owner here at Drone You Elite, or here at Drone You, also a Drone You Elite <laughs> uh, member. Um, but guys, uh, today's show will not have a sponsor as this potentially could be the most controversial episode of Ask Drone You. So grab your popcorn, get your sodas, and put on your seatbelt because... <laughs> This is going to be one show that uh, you could love or you could hate. It just depends. So what are we talking about? Well, Vic Vic went ahead and he put in a FOIA request. What is a FOIA request, Vic? Freedom of Information Act and request. This, and this is essentially the whole, we live in America, we deserve the right to know what's going on behind the scenes with our government, yep. and this is how we find out that information, right? Correct. So Vic put in a FOIA request for the number of FAA enforcement actions against illegal drone pilots. Under 107 rules. Under 107 rules. But if you actually go into the details, this predates 107 because it's 18 months. It starts at July 1st, 2016. Correct. So now, guys, just want to also say that uh, this show is being video recorded. A screenshot of the document that we actually were provided from the Federal Aviation Administration is going to be in the video version, and you can take a look at it yourself. You can go through it and uh, just see everything that we're looking at. Because, again, uh, you know, this is going to be one crazy episode, Vic. This, um, we actually sat in the boardroom and debated whether or not we really even wanted to do this. It was kind of an interesting conversation. And I will say this is probably the most nervous that I have been since we started recording uh, the show, which was quite a long time ago. We're almost to 750 episodes. This is number 747. Uh, and even ironic that it's episode 747, at like the Boeing 747. <laughs> which they're retiring. They just retired. <laughs> so <laughs> That doesn't bode well for us. <laughs> this could be a really controversial. Yeah, but anyway, I, you know, I think it's important, Vic, that we talk about why we're doing this show. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and why are we doing this show? <laughs> <laughs> um, we are, to start this a debate, particular right? show, we are, absolutely. We are, we are absolutely. doing this show to give you the information. Mm-hmm. Uh, to give you our point of view, to showcase some additional points uh, that augment this information mm -hmm. that may sway your opinion about uh, the impact of this information. And it's really to start a debate, right? It is, within it's the to community. start a debate within the community, to start a debate, um, get the FAA in on it. You know, maybe it, this well, will be talked about at the FAA office when this comes out. And I think it's also important to discuss, you know, we are all human. Uh, there are multiple divisions of the FAA, uh, of the NTSB, mm -hmm. um, of the FBI, and those divisions are made up of, of people, right. of human beings, all right? And just like FISDO, I believe that the impact that if more FISDO representatives and inspectors listen to this show, it could spark a reaction mm -hmm. that has a very different uh, overall impact than this particular piece of information. Um, I think so. I really think it will. And I hope it does. Oh, I think, I hope it really does because it's been, I mean, you and I have talked about it. People in the community have talked about it. We want enforcement and we want it public. And I think the more enforcement and the more public it is, the more compliance there will be. I, it, yeah, publicity equates to compliance. I, absolutely. I, I agree. Um, and, you know, I think that we've all been wanting some compliance mm -hmm. because we're like, hey, why are we putting all this time and money into part 107 if, you know, you can't enforce against compliance? Because as you know, society ultimately runs the country. It's, mm -hmm. it's not really the government. Um, and I think that was actually evident this weekend in our training that yep. even though we were in the right places where we could fly, some guy decided he needed to call the police and waste two hours of their time and send them out there even though we had the right to fly. And ultimately, we let the police fly. It was yeah, great. That was fun. So, <laughs> and then the police flew in in their helicopter. In their that helicopter, was not so much fun. Which was really scary. <laughs> but awesome. Uh, but cool. Yeah. So, okay. Let's talk about this. Let's get let's into the, the nitty gritty. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's play do Play horror music now. <laughs> <laughs> Cue horror music. Okay. Uh, all right, Vic. How many 
completed enforcement actions are there? Since the beginning of 107. No, this is this predates 107. Well, the, this the, is July 1st, 2016. FOIA predates 107. Mm -hmm. The first, and I checked this as we were talking, the first report was on the 2nd of, was on 9-2-2-16. Okay. So, but of, we have Checking. what, millions and millions of flights, millions and millions of drones. We've had two. TW0. There have been, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there have been two, two. enforcements. Not now, 20. here's the thing. Before you let that sink in, there's a flip side to this argument. Before we go into these two enforcements, what they were for, how much they cost, the whole nine yards, there's a flip side to this. There are over 8 million drones in the United States mm -hmm. right now. There has only been one confirmed crash with manned aviation. One confirmed. There have been a couple, I think it's less than five, crashes that had any injury on people. Right. So, even though the number of enforcements is low, the number of crashes is low as well. What does that indicate? I think it's overall safe. That drones are overall yeah, we're safe. pretty damn safe. Pretty darn, and most pilots, I think. I think that's a good barometer of the quality of pilots and, and operators we have in the United States. I, I, I agree. So let's talk about these two enforcements. So yes. one of them was for $2,940. Mm -hmm. The other one was for $1,300. Correct. Now, you may be thinking, well, the $2,900 one must be for more rules broken. That's in question at the moment yeah. as we don't have a listed. complete <laughs> view that is correct. It is not listed for one of the two enforcements. The $2,940 uh, enforcement action simply states, and I quote, Hazardous air navigation. Yep. That's it. That's it. But the other one for $1,300 actually lists each hmm. uh, each broken rule. I'm just going to go through this really quick. Now, remember, oh, by the way, would you pull up 91203A? Um, which, remember, this is $1,300 for all of them combined. All right? So the rule's broken. 107.12A, 107.12B, 107.13. 107.19 Charlie, 107.19 Delta, 107.23 Alpha, 107.39, 107.41, 107.47, 107.49 107.49 Delta, and 107.65. Now, if you're not familiar with 107 and you don't have the Drone Pilot Field Kit uh, out with you to look all these up, which you can still download that at dronepilotfieldkit.com. Uh, there are, that is the failure to have a requirement for a certificate, a failure of drone registration, which remember, if you're a commercial pilot, you have always needed registration. Um, they had a hazard to other people, aircraft, or property. They were, 107.23 is for careless and reckless flight. 107.39. What is that, Vic? That is operations over human beings. So he was flying over people. Over people. There's what, your first violation for what that. What is 107.41? 107.41 is our ever popular airworth or air um, airspace authorization number. So that's flying in restricted airspace. So he's flying in restricted airspace over people. Mm -hmm. What's 107.47? The notum requirement. So he was flying when there was a notum for hazardous operations in the air to begin with, mm -hmm. in restricted airspace. Over people. O o With over people. a gas-powered aircraft. We just oh, figured wow. that out. Because <laughs> 91203 civil aircraft certifications required, and all it talks about is fuel tanks, fuel venting, fuel tanks, it's air weatherness. It's oh, it's B? Mm -hmm. I apologize. Air weatherness. Oh, no, no, no. That's not right. It was A. 91203A. No person me. shall operate a civil aircraft unless it has appropriate airworthiness certificate. So I was incorrect. So maybe so the drone was outside of the Part 107 operations? Or it's a home built. Interesting. Okay. So um, so now here's the, here's the real kicker. So mm -hmm. he's flying over people. He's flying in restricted airspace, flying during a notum. 107.49 Delta. You know what that has to do with? Having enough available power <laughs> for the flight itself. So this guy is running out of battery. We had fun you know, speculating on that one. Yeah, this, okay. So what we're about to say is all speculation. Then we'll go back to the real talk. So he's flying over people in restricted airspace during a notum, has a failure to assess risk, has a, he's flying carelessly, recklessly, and doesn't have enough power to finish the flight. Yep, that, that, that's what I get out of it. That sounds like one desperate shot he's trying to go after. Yep. 
I hope it was a good shot. It better have been a really good shot. It better have been at least worth $1,300. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's go back to the real talk now. All right. So the $2,940 um, enforcement mm-hmm. was for what? We don't know. All it says is hazardous air navigation, which I would, rec- I, I would think that it's something worse than... I'm thinking either that or they didn't lawyer up. That's true. Yeah, they, all the lawyers out there are going to be hearing this, being like, "Wow, oh, the power of lawyers really goes to show that." Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should we should get a lawyer for a sponsor. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Jeff, Aviation John, attorney. there you go. Hello, <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, anyway, so okay, with with so few w- uh, enforcements against illegal drone pilots, do you think the one hundred and seven still has value? I do, personally. I think a lot of people are going to think it's not, and they're going to think of it and go, why? But I think we have some good arguments. So one of those arguments, if I may, sure, um, is that just like manned aviation, the Federal Aviation Administration are not the true regulators of the industry. Do you know who is? You want to take a guess? I'm going to guess, since my wife's in the industry, insurance. Oh, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. You got it. Yep. $500 goes to you, Mr. Vic Moss. I could use that. <laughs> I get fined. There Don't you forget your uh, owner's check is probably in my oh, Yeah, office. that's true. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I believe I- insurance is, is tr- the true regulator, just like in man aviation. Here's why. If you use Verify, if you use transport risk management, if you use global aerospace, which global aerospace accounts for, I think it's like 65%. That's a lot. Uh, you know, uh, of the whole industry as a whole. And they say very specifically in in the fine print, Mm -hmm. I looked this up, if you're not following FAA guidelines and regulations, then your claim will not be paid out. My my, my policy is through the Hartford, and I'm one of very few who have that. And it is, yeah, regulations are, they don't don't list the regulations. They say you have to follow regulations. So the regulations clearly state that you need a license mm-hmm. to fly. And you shouldn't fly over people So and lose your batteries. If you don't have a certificate to fly because you think the 107 doesn't have value because of the lack of enforcement, and you go out and you crash, is insurance going to cover you? And the answer is no. Wow. So if one crash, you hurt one person, business is It over. doesn't have to be a person. It could, could be, be a, a car. Cat. It could be a car. Someone's precious little poodle. Well... We won't go there. (laughs) The world may be better off without the poodle. I did not say that. (laughs) Email address is. Um, Uh, But here's the thing. mm -hmm. I mean, do you think enforcement actions are going to increase in in number? I hope so. I mean, we see, what, three pending already? Three pending. So that would mean that the rate of enforcements would already increase 150%. Correct. Correct. But what about the rate of the cost of enforcements? Um, The cost to the enforce E Mm -hmm. is going up. So by almost triple, it looks right, like. Right, right. So there are three pending enforcements, mm-hmm. of which, well, I mean, we're, we're getting up into the $4,600 range here. Mm-hmm. So that's almost, that's almost, yeah, triple is probably good. Yep. Um, almost thir- triple. For, yeah. Actually, a little over triple for the $1,300 mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. 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 So now, what's the other thing that could come out of this show? So people may be questioning the value of 107, but without insurance, they could get truly effed without saying the word. Please don't. Fair. That's the word I was going. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know what word I'm talking about. I know. Um, the second thing is the FAA could hear this show and think, hmm, two. Two enforcements. Now, you're going to see on the document that there are 18 individual line items. But two are closed enforcements. Three are pending enforcements. The others are? Um, let's see. We've got a warning notice and a letter of correction. And I think that's all there were. Which isn't really... Too surprising as the FAA is... Uh, in, That's their SOP. Yeah, yeah compliance philosophy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing. FAA could hear this and say, hmm, now people are going to wonder if they need a 107, then people are may potentially fly and go wild, fly however they want, and the need for enforcement would increase naturally. Thus, by them hearing this, they say, hmm, maybe we should enforce more. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if people feel they don't need a 107 and no enforcement in their eyes, no enforcement action will happen, then the rate of crashes and incidents would increase while the value for 107 decreases, then regulators would follow suit and increase regulation. Yeah, it's, 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 it could be a really, it could be a huge snowball running down the hill. 
So maybe then the lack of enforcement is actually to allow the market to grow. I don't think so. You don't think I don't so? Would, I would not like to see a market grow in that direction or in that, in that way. Uh, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to put all the available fluff out there. Oh, yeah, it could. You know? It could. I would like to not see it, but it absolutely could. So then could increased regulation be a good thing or a bad thing for the industry? I think personally it would be a horrible thing. I do not like increased um, – um, I don't like increased regulation. I think we have enough. It's like more laws are going to keep you from doing things that they're already not supposed to so do. So then it would also limit the, the the potential size of the industry as opportunities wither away. Possibly. Now, the other side of that argument is that with more regulation and a higher barrier to entry, that it could actually be good for drone pilots. And you may be sitting here listening to this in bed or as some people tell me in morning while they're you know, taking their morning poo. Whatever, wherever you listen to the show, hey, you wouldn't believe what people I have said to me. I don't want to hear. Do you remember Michael Jackson from Arizona? I listen to you while I'm in bed. I mean, like, I mean, I mean. <laughs> oh yeah. Or no, yeah. no, no, no. That was Dean Kelly. That was Dean. Was it? It was either Dean. That was Michael Jackson. It, either way, yeah. it was one of them. I'm Shout sorry. Shout out to I'm those sorry, guys, gentlemen. by the way. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Whether you listen to me in bed or taking the poo, I don't care. Uh, either way, here's the thing. An argument was made because I, I I called one of my dear friends. Uh, in this in this uh, community, mm-hmm. uh, he is he's powerful. He works for a very large manufacturer, and he says more regulation could be good, right, for pilots, not for manufacturers, but for pilots, correct? Because with less pilots, higher barrier to entry, pilots would make more money. Keynesian economics, supply and demand, voila, right. But it could also limit opportunities. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm and you and we, you and I are both this way, but I'll just speak about it. But I'm not. A big fan of barriers to entry. Oh, me neither. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, we, we made that argument on the show. Oh, oh yeah, time lots ago. of times, lots yeah. of times. But it's I'm I'm a big I'm a big fan of safety barriers to entry. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, as it should be. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just like why construction has rules. They don't want people falling off of, uh, uh, what is it called, scaffolding, scaffolding and dying. Yeah, that would you suck. Mean, no one likes it. Ruin their day, and their family's day, mm-hmm. and their family's family's day. But now here's the other thing that could happen. Yep. As part 107 pilots hear this, they could cry for help in doing two different things, one of which could be an increase in self-policing. I mean, I, I know myself. I, uh, I have, you know, m- made the phone call to the uh, local FISDO a couple times because I know two things. Number one, I researched the Airmen Registry to see if they had a license. And number two, I know that the FAA's compliance philosophy is just that, a compliance philosophy. Right. It's a little slap on the wrist. You're not going to really get in trouble. They correct you as long as you don't do it. You don't get in trouble. Right. But if you do it again, you're going to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then if you do it a third time is when you, they're supposed to bring out the checkbook. And the indictment book. Yes. Anyway. If it's that egregious. That's true. Now- if Part 107 pilots cry for help and and create more of a self policing uh, nature in the industry, which I think it, it should happen either way, it could quantitate a need for more enforcements. Mm-hmm. If pilots are protesting for more enforcements, the FAA hears this. We hear more enforcements. It adds value to the 107. Correct. Correct. I mean, do you think that that could be a good thing, Vic? I think it'd be, you know, anytime you add value to the 107, it's a good thing. Almost. We talked about the barrier to entry. Um, absolutely. Uh, I think if, if, um, if, if we as, a, as an industry, and I don't mean, you know, we're not talking about the, the, the drone cops or the Facebook cops or that stupid little thing people do on Facebook all the time where oh, I'm telling mommy kind of thing. I'm talking about the violations that are dangerous and that are um, really industry hurting Going to the going to the FISDO with that, if you can't um, – I'm a big believer in talking to the pilot first and say, hey, look, do you not know? And sometimes they don't. Most of the times they do. Do you – now, now do, when you do that, mm-hmm. do you talk to pilots like you just did in a very nice Vic manner? Or do Vic. you Or do you do the more Peter like, hey, yo, bro, what you doing? Huh? What you doing? So my, I get out my driver's license. It says Vic. So, yeah, I do the Vic manner. Mm, I thought you were going to grab the little small black sandbags and beat them <laughs> across the face with it. Oh, no. <laughs> No, I'm sure the thoughts cross your mind once or twice. Oh, it crossed my mind. The difference <laughs> is, I don't do anything. I don't do it. It feels when, great to do it yeah, in your mind, the, and then uh, you stop and think that's a really bad idea. I'm going to end up in jail. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so if FAA increased enforcement, you think it would uh, increase, uh, or you think it would create a safer environment? Oh, 100. Anytime you enforce something that has rules, and that rules are there for a reason, 
for safety, if you if you enforce it, it's safer. I mean, if, if you make all these rules for safety and don't enforce it, what's the point of the rules in the first place? Yeah. No, that's, that's a good point. I also think it'd be a great education for people who are hiring Part 107 mm-hmm. pilots that, you know, Part 107 exists. It exists for a reason. And if you don't comply, we will come after you. Right. And there's that email that's, that's circulating, uh, been circulating around here for about the last six months where the FAA flat out said it's an $1,100 fine for the, for the pilot and $11,000 fine for the people who knowingly hired the pilot. That's the key word, knowingly. Yeah. And an enforcement action on that, I didn't ask for, obviously, but I would be amazed if it was two. It's probably zero. So the publicity enforcements would not only add value to Part 107, but potentially decrease the amount of illegal pilots. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Now, let me ask you. So you just we just talked about companies. We just talked about pilots and enforcements against both. In these enforcements, were they against pilots or were they against companies? Both. Mostly pilots. I think that we'd count what three or four different companies that actually have enforcement actions against them. But those were only those were not those enforce- were enforcement. Uh, what do warnings. they call it? Records. Records. So they let's clarify this. Records. There are only two completed enforcement actions. Correct. And I, I, we just have to be so careful in the With language wording. we use. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Vernacular is important because two closed and three pending. So of yes, uh, two closed, three pending of eighteen records. Correct. And in these records, there were how many companies? Uh, let's do, let's see, we got one, um, I'm, I think there were four, one, two, three, four, five, because one of them is a, is a, is a, 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 and one with identity expunged. I found that one really interesting. I did too. But, um, so there's, there's five companies, including one in my own state of Colorado. Casey. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no it, we decided it wasn't Casey because it started too we, early. Yeah, we it did started, some started more, too late. We did some more investigative yeah. work. Um, but, Which is interesting. It's not on there. Well, yeah. I think, and, and, you know, we talked about this before mm-hmm, we went on the exactly. show. I think that the, the disconnect is that these records are only records that went from FISDO's local office right. to the national that's, office. And that's what we think. That is our yeah. guess. And if FAA, somebody would like to let us know otherwise. Yeah, I'm not naming names right that. now because any FAA names that show up on this podcast, you know, are going to be on meeting minutes right. of the FAA right. in the coming weeks. And we should, we should, this isn't a CYA thing. This is actually, we really feel this way. There are some awesome, awesome people in the FAA. You and I talked to them. Agreed. Um, it's just of which who had notified us that there were enforcement actions, but couldn't talk about them because they're yes. only supposed to be public um, if they reach a certain threshold of of civil penalties. Correct. But these are public, and by the way, um, these these records did come with names. Yes, we're and not we, showing them. We made it a point to not give out those names. Right. Um, I am not. Uh, this is not V for Vendetta. Uh, it's V for Vic. What it is is we just want to get the enforcements out there. Who did them is, right. is not important. Although it's, I would like to talk to the thirteen hundred dollar. We would like to talk to the and, and you know you know who you are. Um, but if you would like to come on and talk about why it was thirteen hundred dollars for thirteen different, I mean obviously they 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 talked it down to his a, name starts with a T. Correct. Um, actually, it starts with a J. But um, anyway, um, we would love to talk to you about it and find out what happened, why it happened. So was um, it JT? No, it wasn't. Um, but okay. we. Um, you know, we want to find out what happened and was it intentional? Was it ignorance? Was it a mistake? Um, we don't, we don't want to call anybody out because we don't no. know the story. No. That's not why we're here. No. So just a quick recap. Mm-hmm. Two enforcement actions, one for $2,940, one for $1,300. Um, but the long and the short of it is even if you decide to not renew your 107, which the recency exam is here in August. Right. And we'd love to know what that is. We would love to know if it is an (laughs) exam or if you're going to treat us like every other pilot in the world and, you know, do something different, which I would hope that it's something different as your testing centers are about to be overrun. Anyway. Oh, they're going to get slammed. Anyway, let's let's keep moving forward. Right. Sorry. If you don't have a 107 and you crash, even if you have insurance and you think you're covered, they will not pay out. Correct. For the simple reason that in the insurance policies, it says, if you do not follow the regulations, the claim will not be paid out. Correct. So there is still a lot of intrinsic value with 107. Well, there's a huge intrinsic value with 107. We're not here to say don't get your 107 or not renew your, not re, not re, um. Which was my big fear coming on the show. I had to think about significantly like, wow, 
two enforcements. Like, I'm sure you guys are sitting here thinking the same thing. But then I thought, okay, hold on. Take a step back. Perspective, perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, maybe this is good news. Because if there are 8 million drones, which we know that there are more than that. That's just kind of a rough guess based off of published sales numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, If there are 8 million drones, one confirmed uh, manned aviation, unmanned aviation crash, less than five accidents involving people. That goes to show that these things are 99.9993% safe. Correct. Which is awesome. I love it. And it's great It's great data. It is great data. On the other hand, it shows that there are not that many enforcements. Mm-hmm. And we know there's violations. So that's the disconnect there. We know there are violations. Oh, We've yeah. seen them. Yeah, I mean... Uh, the one we posted on the website yeah. or the Facebook page? Yeah, which we... That yeah. now has a quarter million views? Exactly. Uh-huh. I mean, it's, it's, there are violations. We know it, that happens. And even a 101 violation is going to be a 107 violation because odds are if you're busting 101, well, not odds are, definition is if you're busting 101, you're then flying under 107. So any 101 violation is going to be 107. So we know violations are out there. It's the disconnect between well, the number I, of violations it, and the number of enforcements. So isn't it if that you are not following the community guidelines of 101, then, then it is enforced under 107? Yeah, that, that's, that's the dude that, that crashed in the CIA um, school. Gotcha. <laughs> he was he was popped under 107. Poor guy. No. Of all the people you want to be arrested yeah. by, not them. <laughs> of all the places you want to crash, it's not CIA <laughs> University flying uh, off the runway at Dulles. Although I'd love to go to that university. But anyway, um, so I mean... Uh, uh, what are your thoughts here, Vic? Because I am at a loss for words right now. I have tried to make the case both ways. Right. I mean, that's what we're here to do. The, I feel like good news, good good journalism, good uh, discussions, good debates, good arguments should showcase an unbiased view of both sides. Right. And I think we have. Um, we both have our bias because we're humans and humans have bias. But I, 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 our main decision here to do this, whether or not to do it because we did debate on whether or not to do it, is we've got to get this conversation started. I think it's important. Inside the community and outside the community. Yeah. It's just giving me a headache here sitting thinking about oh, it, I know, to be honest. Oh, I know. I know. It's and I'm I'm st- I, we we may we may change our minds. After I mean, we digest this, always, we may go, you know what? There's always an evolution of yeah. ideologies. We should have said this or we should have said that. And maybe we will. Yeah, we'll maybe addend- we'll, we'll addendum. Maybe we'll get a new B. FOIA request out and it'll be like 100 records. Well, you know? only if they happened after, uh, let's see, what's the latest date? Because <gasps> the other thing here is, too, is that this could spark more enforcements. And in all honesty, maybe I'm hoping for that. Oh, I would love to. I've, uh, <laughs> it has been... Uh, don't open your text messages there. It's from my wife. I'm allowed. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it has been a discussion on, of mine with people that would would be able to do it is to get the enforcements out. We're not asking you to go out and enforce Bobby for flying his little drone around somewhere he's not supposed to. Yeah, or, Beach Bobby yeah, in exactly. Massachusetts. Exactly. Um, but Which, the, by the way, wasn't on here. I know it wasn't. Well, it's it's not. It's still it's still it's not there yet. It's, well, but some of these are pending. It. I know, but it's All right. yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't think it started much, but. Um, it's the egregious, the, you know, bite me FAA guys that are out there and the obviously, um, I don't want to pick on realtors because I won't, but <laughs> <laughs> the realtors, but. I know they're not supposed to, but do it anyway. Oh, well, and I'm just time. using that because it's, it, there's, there's so guy, many of them. There's a guy there's in so Santa Fe and uh, he's one of those guys. And I, mm-hmm. I, or the photo- Okay. I'm a photographer. Let's pick on photographers. The photographers who are out there, which is one of the guys we think in the FOIA, um, uh, it's been verified. It, well, we think it's been verified. We have, mm-hmm. He hasn't answered us yet. I believe it's verified. It's it's, it's Vera and we're waiting for Fide. How does that sound? <laughs> um, photographers are out there that are doing it. So I don't want to pick on one particular genre of disciplines. I agree. And, and, and you know, the other thing that I'll say here is that there is this uh, indirect, um, there is this, uh, I'm trying to think of con- uh, contract law, there is an implied, that's the word I was going for. Okay. There is an implied lack of regulation with drones. And I give the example of Best Buy. You go mm-hmm. into Best Buy, you buy a camera, you don't need a license to take photos and sell them. You go into Best Buy, you buy a drone, 
people have been buying cameras for 20 years, if not longer, probably a lot longer, but not at Best Buy. Right. And I think that the ideology is similar. I can just buy this and go use it. Yep. And I think it's, I think it's education, correct. Um, and it's not, we're not just picking on Best Buy, by the way. Um, Costco, Sam's Club, Amazon. Um, yeah, it's uh, the, the education side of things. I think it would really be good to have as well. But that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, if you guys remember the podcast we did on the 11-year-old boy, uh, after a, a conversation with the FAA that I had, um, it is believed that there was a egregious behavior by the uh, kid's dad. Yeah. I, that's, and that's, that's what we're hearing. The, and they he never got the back to us. Yeah. That they had. We've said all along, it's just like the, you know, it's like a highway patrolman pulls you over for a, a taillight that's out and you go, I'm sorry, I didn't know. We'll get it fixed. I'll go to the next town or in my case, um, License plate lights, and that was a very nice thank you, Mr. Officer in Arizona. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or if you go, hey, officer, F you. Yeah, you then know? he's going to find every little violation As he that should, you have because, on your car. I mean, I'm a human. If I was a cop and some guy was like, you're an a ho, mm -hmm. and I'm right and you're wrong, I'd be like, oh, well, let's just find out and pull the book out on you. You know what I mean? And that's how you get three meals in a cot for a week. <laughs> In the county popo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, reaction is always important in how you handle conflict resolution. And how, um, whether or not you'll make the list next time. True. Make the next FOIA request true. list. True, 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 true. Mm -hmm. So all in all, how do you, how do you want to wrap this up? What do you think? Oh, man. If you were to ask the FAA to react to this public, now public. We are actually asking the FAA to react to this publicly. No, there's no if there. Um, we, I think we as community of pilots and operators want this to happen. But in the meantime, what we need to do is this is a, 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 we've said it twice now, let's say it three times. This is a great platform to start the conversation with, within ourselves, mm -hmm. in between ourselves and publicly and, and with, and hopefully nicely. Yeah. I mean, we, the, you know, we're not going to get anywhere yelling at each other. No, and if you can't, you know, as my dad said, as a lawyer who made um, who's who 25 years in a row, number one in uh, his practice of law for 15 years, um, the moment you raise your voice, you've already lost the argument. The moment you show emotion, you've already lost the argument, whatever argument you're making. So I agree with you. Um, civility is important. Hugely important. Um, and guys, you know, we want to hear what you think. You know, just uh, we're going to post this on Facebook and, you know, we want to hear what you have to say. Uh, it's going to be on YouTube. We want to hear what you have to say. Yep. And if you want to make a statement to be played on the next show, just go to askdroneu.com, upload that statement, and we uh, we will for sure play it. Um, and, you know, guys, I just want to say again, thank you for the continued support. We try to deliver this podcast in the best way we, we could uh, come to in the quick time that we had. Yeah, it's a very it was a very unplanned. Yeah, I mean, you were coming here. <laughs> I was coming here for something else. Yeah, you to drop off footage. Yep. So, and um, I... Driving down the road, and I get an email from the FAA FOIA office, and so I texted you right away and say, which, "Podcast." Yeah, which, by the way, thank you very much, Miss um, Fort Worth. I'm not going to give out her name. I know oh, I the lady, yeah, yeah, the lady. Yeah, thank you for sending me that. Oh yeah, we do appreciate mm -hmm. it. And um, you know, I, it, I would just say a personal statement from me to anyone in the FAA who is listening to this. Um, I think that this goes to show that you know maybe there is a need for more enforcement. Um, maybe there is a need because uh, perception is reality in all in uh, all instances. But also, the Part 107 still holds a very valid and important uh, uh, value, and that is mm -hmm. that if you screw up and you hurt someone mm -hmm. or you damage property or you or just fly where violate, you should, there you go. Uh, y you know. It's not the FAA that you have to worry about. And it's funny because, you know, Mr. English from the NTSB said, you know, whenever you get in trouble in aviation, the FAA fine is just, and I will never forget this, just the icing on the cake. <laughs> there are so many criminal uh, laws that you're breaking. Uh, they're like, you know, it's the FBI that you're going to be worried about knocking on your door, right. not the FAA. Correct. So it really is the icing on the cake. The value in the 107 is that if you screw up, you're not going to be insured. You're going to lose everything. I mean, it's just like you want to take – if you want people to comply – You screw up without a 107. Yeah, yeah. You screw up without a 107. Excuse me. But it's like you know, if you if, – if the government wants you to do something, they're going to take away 
one of two things, money or liberty. Mm -hmm. And it's not even the government that has to do it because society will do it for them. Yep. If you screw up, you hit someone with a drone and you cause enough damage to ruin that person's life, if you don't think the same thing is going to happen to you where your life is ruined financially, you have something coming for you. Yep. And uh, I, yeah, I think that that's it. And I think that, uh, again... My heart is racing. <laughs> it's, it's, it is. It is. It's just a very weird podcast. And yeah. we built it up, and I hope it's it, it's just a weird podcast. Yeah. And I think we're going to have a follow-up because I'm dying to know how people are going to react to True. this. Uh, I too. am dying to know. Because people, I've been telling people for the last two months I've got a FOIA in. And so yeah. here it is, folks. Here it is, guys. So anyway, you heard it here first yep. on Ask Drone You. Vic, thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you, Paul. And uh, if, if people want to learn more from you, where mm -hmm. could they do that? They can go to my website, which is mossphotography.biz, mm -hmm. spelled just like the stuff that grows on trees, mossphotography.biz. They can also check out your class. My classes, if you're a drone, you remember, we have some photography classes. Mm -hmm. We're going to have some podcasts coming up. And it's going to be a ton of fun. It is. It is. Guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening. Uh, I do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. If you would leave us a review, uh, we would also greatly appreciate that. As we do read the reviews. Yes, we do. Wherever you listen to shows, whether it's on the website, whether it is on iTunes, whether it is on Stitcher. Um, if you are using Android to listen to shows, Stitcher is uh, what you can use. But anyway, that is going to do it for us today. Vic, thank you very much. Thanks again. Thank you. That is going to do it for us. As I said again, my name is Paul. You're listening to Ask Drone You. Thank you.